so far we have seen the basic structure of pn junction and discussed briefly how space charge layer is formed in this lecture we will examine the properties of the pn junction in thermal equilibrium where no current exist and no external excitation or bias is applied we will also determine the potential through the space charge layer electric field in the space charge base charge region or layer and the width of this space charge region so let's first see the built in
potential barrier or the potential difference across the space trans layer. Here, we are assuming that no voltage is applied. across the PN junction. Therefore, the junction is in the thermal equilibrium. So let's see what happens to the energy bands of this P type and N type semiconductors after forming of this junction. So let's first make energy diagram of this individual P type and N type junction. So let's, this is the vacuum level for P type, this is the minimum of the conduction band and this is the maximum for valence band. Since it's a P type semiconductor. So its Fermi level is near the valence band. Now let's make energy band diagram for n-type semiconductor. This is the vacuum level. This is the minimum of the conduction band and this is the valence band for this n-type. Since this is a, a n-type material, so its Fermi level is near the conduction band. So, when we bring close these two materials, then we know that since here the level of the electrons is above the level of the electrons in P-type, so after forming a junction, 
electrons will move in p type material and in this way the level of the electrons will move in upward direction for p type material and levels of the electrons for n type materials will move in downward direction so after making a junction let's make how this bands will move or will bend since this level will go in upward direction so first let me make this this is evac this is ec for p type and this is ev this is the fermi level i am going to form this depletion layer here so first i am so we know that after formation of this junction the fermi level in both sides will be at the same level so since electrons will move from n type to p type so fermi level in n type will move in downward direction so this is evac vacuum level for n type this is same ec and this is so here we can see that so here we can see that after making after formation of this junction we can see fermi level in both of these sides here important thing is that the fermi level after this junction there is no change in the work function or fermi level with respect to the vacuum level in both of these semiconductors and the fermi level is only changed in this space charge region or in this depletion region here i am 
drawing this dashed line to show the middle of this junction and if doping on both sides are same then we can see that this middle line is always remain in the middle of this space charge region or the bands are equally bent in both of these p type and n type so here this potential is known as built in potency or built in potential barrier so we have to calculate this built in potential and let me write some points regarding this built in potential first point is electrons in the conduction band of n region c a potential barrier in trying to move into the conduction band of the p region here in this band diagram we can see that electrons can't move to the p side from this n side due to this built in potential second point is the built in potential that is vbi maintains equilibrium between majority carrier electrons in the n region and minority carrier 
electrons in the P region. Similarly, between majority carrier holes in P region and minority carrier holes in N region. So this built-in potential is very important to maintain an equilibrium between these majority and minority carriers. And the third which is the most important point is that this potential difference across the PN junction cannot be measured with a voltmeter. Because new potential barrier will be formed between the probes of the voltmeter and the semiconductor. that will cancel the built-in potential VBI across the junction. So this point is very important. So now let's determine the value of this potential barrier or built-in potential barrier. This built-in potential barrier that is VBI can be written as the difference in the work function of P-type semiconductor minus the 
work function of n type semiconductor where phi p is the work function of p region and phi n is the work function of n region or n type semiconductor whatever you want to say it. so vbi is the work function of p type material minus work function of n type material and now we have to correlate this work function with the carrier concentration we know that in the n region the electron concentration in the conduction band can be written as n naught which is equal to nc exponential ec minus ef by kt which is minus and we have written this equation in equa in unit first we have EF is the Fermi level for this N type material. We can, I think I forgot to write this EF for this is the Fermi level for N type material and this is the Fermi level for P type material. We can also write Fermi level for intrinsic semiconductor, which is in the middle of this EC and EV. So we can write it as EFI, and similarly for N type. This is the Fermi level for intrinsic semiconductor. So we can write. this equation as n naught which is equal to n i exponential e f minus e f i here we are correlating the Fermi level in n type material to the Fermi level for intrinsic material KT by KT. So, this is equation number second.
here n i is the intrinsic carrier concentration and we can define potential in n region by phi Fn which is equal to Ef i minus Ef so by putting this value In equation 2, we can write N note as N note which is equal to Ni into exponential minus E phi Fn by Kt. We know that N naught can be equal to N D. So on taking N naught equal to N D, which is the concentration of donor atoms. and using natural logarithm on both side of above equation We can write Fn which is equal to minus Kt by E log natural Nd by and I so this is the potential towards N side
Similarly, in the P region, the concentration which is whole can be written as P note which is equal to concentration of the acceptor atoms which is again equal to Ni exponential EFI minus EF by KT and the potential phi f p in the p region can be written as e phi f p which is equal to e f i minus e f so combining on combining these two equation which is equation number six and equation number 7 so on combining equation 6 and 7 we can write Phi F P which is equal to plus K T by E log natural N A by N I which is equation number eighth. So this is the potential towards P side. So the finally The built in potential barrier for this PN junction.
can be written as that is VBI which is equal to potential towards N side plus potential towards P side So finally, by putting these values, we can write VBI as which is equal to KT by E log natural NA. N D by N I square. So this is the value of built in potential. Across a PN junction. Here we can see that this built in potential is directly proportional to acceptor concentration of acceptor and donor atoms sometimes kt by e known as thermal voltage and can be represented as kt sorry vt so we can write vbi as vt log natural n a n d by n i square so this is our built in potential In starting, I said that built-in potential is equal to the difference in the work function in both of the sides. So we can measure the work function of P side and N side or by measuring the Fermi level of N side and P side. We can also determine this built-in potential. Here, I calculated this built-in potential using different potential across P side and N side and then added those potential. So now, let's consider electric field generated in the space charge region the electric field can be determined by using Poisson equation So, first dimension 
so for sorry one dimension for one dimension Poisson equation can be written as d square phi x by d x square which is equal to minus rho x by epsilon s which is equal to minus d e and d x where phi x is the electric potential rho x is the volume charge density and e x is the electric field and epsilon s is the permittivity of the semiconductor so for calculating electric field let's consider the width of this junction in n side and p side so let's this distance as minus xp and this is as xn so for calculation of the electric field we have to determine the volume charge density in n side and in p side so we know that rho x which is equal to minus e n a in the p side from minus x p to 0 that is middle of the junction and we also know that 
चार्ज डेंसिटी इन एन साइड इज इक्वल टू ई इंटू एन डी फ्रॉम ए डिस्टेंस जीरो टू एक्स एन so by putting these two values in the above equation we can determine this e by using this equation which is equal to E N A sin S D X This is the potential electric field in the P region which is equal to minus E N A into epsilon S X plus C one, and by using appropriate initial condition, we can get. the value of this c1 and finally electric field in the p region can be written as minus e n a by epsilon s into x plus xp so this is the electric field from minus xp to zero that is to the middle of the junction similarly the potential sorry the electric field in n region can be written as e n which is equal to the integration of this e n d by epsilon s with respect to ds which is equal to e n d epsilon s plus c2 and again by using appropriate initial condition that is e equal to 0 at x equal to xn we can get the value of this equation as en which is equal to minus e n d by epsilon s into x n minus x and this field is from 0 to a distance of x n so here e p is equal to e n that is electric field in p region is equal to the n region and it is important to note that the 
a maximum electric field will be at x equal to 0 that is in the middle of the junction so on putting the value of x equal to 0 in above equations we can write E maximum that is maximum electric field which is equal to minus E N A by epsilon S dot X P which is also equal to minus E N D by epsilon S into xn so from here we can also cancel these two es and e and we can write nd xp which is equal to n a x n this is very important from here we can see that the number of negative charge carriers or negative charges per unit area in P region is equal to the number of positive charges per unit area in the end region so here important thing is that when the doping in doping is same in both of the side then electric field will also be same on both of these same doctors and maximum electric field will be at the middle of the junction and we know that we can also get the value of barrier potential by using this electric field and by using this electric field we can get built-in potential as E by 2 epsilon S into ND XN square plus NA x e squared and this value will be the 
सेम एज वी डिटरमेंड दिस बिल्ट इन पोटेंशियल इन अर्लियर पार्ट ऑफ दिस लेक्चर सो नाउ वी हैव टू कंसिडर द स्पेस चार्ज विथ and this is easy to get this space charge width so from the i didn't give any number to many equations let's say this equation is r so from this equation number r we can write xp as nd xn by n a and by putting this value of xp in the value of built in potential which is this one then we can get this from here we can get this xp and by putting this xp in the vbi we can get this value of xn which is equal to the 2 epsilon s into vbi by e into n a by n d into 1 by n a plus n d under root again from here we can get the value of xn and on putting the this value in the above xn we can get a similar equation for xp which is equal to 2 epsilon s by e into vbi into n d by n a into 1 by n a plus n d under the root so finally the width of this junction w can be written as xn plus xp and by putting the value of xn and xp from above two equation equations we can get w which is equal to 2 epsilon s vbi by e into n a plus n d into sorry by n a 
into nd under root so by knowing the built in potential normally the value of na nd are given in the problem so or we know these values so by knowing the value of this built in potential we can get the value of this space charge width and by this value we can also get e maximum by using the value of this xn and xp which is equal to minus e by epsilon s into 2 epsilon s vbi by e into n a n d by n a plus n d under root which is and which is equal to two v b i by potential width or by space charge width sorry space charge width so this equation is also important because by knowing the built in potential and this space charge width we can directly measure the maximum electric field so this is all about the pn junction under zero applied bias in the next lecture we will see the built in potential and other things by using some bias across this pn junction